I am Gustav Sevenhausen, the Dean of the Faculty of Human Ecology, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you Janice Filman, who will receive an honorary Doctor of Laws degree at this morning's ceremony. The highest honor the Senate of a University can confer upon an individual is the honorary doctorate. At the, at the University of Manitoba, the criteria include distinguished achievement in scholarship, the arts, or public service. Janice Filman is recognized for her prolific work with community organizations and committees at the local, uh, provincial, and national, international levels, including serving on the boards of Cancer Care, Manitoba Foundation, the Art of Immoral Center for Peace and Justice at the University of Manitoba. In 2007, she was made an officer of the Order of Manitoba. Ms. Filman was born in Winnipeg, graduated from the University of Manitoba with a Bachelor of Science in Home Economics. She worked as a social worker with Children's Aid Society of Winnipeg and was a caseworker in family protection. She is past president of the University of Manitoba Al Alumni Association and a past member of the University of Manitoba Student Union Scholarship Fund and Endowment Fund Board of Trustees. She is the president of the Nellie McClunk Foundation, was the founding co-chair for Leadership Winnipeg, and continues to be involved in youth leadership. The Manitoba Cancer Treatment and Research Foundation have honored her <coughs> with the Guardian Angel Award, as well as the Manitoba Cancer and Treatment Research Foundation and Great West Life created the Genesee Filman Award for Leadership in Cancer Care in Manitoba to honor those who make significant contributions in this field. And the Arthur V. Morrow Center for Peace and Justice have a student award named after her. In the spring of 2005, Ms. Feldman received the Peter D. Curry Chancellor's Award at the University of Manitoba for contributions to the university's governance and development. In June of 2005, Janice and her husband Gary were jointly honored with the Distinguished Alumni Award at the University of Manitoba's full convocation. Ms. Filman is very well known for her volunteerism. She was the founding co-chair of Leadership Winnipeg, the founding chair of Manitoba Alive, a leadership initiative which teaches selected high school students the skills needed in the voluntary sector. She was chair of the festivals of, of, for the 1999 Pan American Games and, and has acted as a member of Toronto's 2008 Olympic Bid Committee. She was honorary co-chair of the Thunderbird Lodge Capital Campaign and a board member of the Canadian Centre for Social Justice. She was a board member of the Manitoba Advisory Committee on Breast Cancer and national board member for Help the Aged. This is a short list. Her full resume brought her the honor of receiving the Variety Club Goldheart Humanitarian of the Year Award in 2006. Mr. Chancellor, it is an honor for me to ask you, on behalf of the Senate <coughs> of the University of Manitoba, that you confer upon Janice Filman the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Mrs. Filman, will you please come forward? By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of this University, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Filman. I just told them they all looked wonderful up here. You do too. You have to have a little bit of fun with this, right? So I don't choke. 
Okay, Gary, you up the ante. Congratulations, honey. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, President Bernard, platform guests, and so many friends, those of you that chose to come back and join us here, I thank you on behalf of both of us. Thank you. Family and friends, those who have come from out of town, I hope you have a chance to meet them. Graduands, do you know that you're a graduand until you get your degree given to you and you will be a graduate in a very few moments. Thank you so sincerely for this opportunity to be with you this morning. It was E.B. White who said, I arise in the morning torn between a desire to save the world and a desire to savor the world. That makes it hard to plan the day. Well, I decided to savor the world today. And so to the Senate, I didn't write any words because I think when you say thank you, you want to be able to say it from here. I just need a minute. Are you with me? I woke up this morning and I thought about the day. I didn't plan on this. I see that you've got a hand. It's very well. Thank you. A little hot, a little choking, whatever, I'll be fine. Thank you. I did wake up this morning, obviously I'm here, and I thought about the day. And I, because of the decision the Senate made, it was pause for reflection and for memories. I thought about my mom and dad, neither of whom are here. I thought, and the love that they gave to me. I thought about my sister, who was on staff at the University of Manitoba, who is in a personal care home, unable to speak. I thought about my family. <laughs> Three of, I think all four are here. At any rate, I think what I really want to say to the Senate is just thank you. Thank you very much. It is very meaningful. And congratulations to all the other honorary degree recipients. Thank you for your work and service to this community. And I'm honored, we are honored, to be in your company. And to my husband, Gary's already about spoken of our lives together. I echo his sentiments about education. It's been a wonderful partnership, an amazing ride, and I have had an incredible life that I wouldn't have had otherwise. From being here, I loved being here, and I hope you love being here at the University of Manitoba. It was a memorable time of life, and that time was about lifelong friend making, the discipline of learning, philanthropy, that idea was incubated here. And we're equally proud that three of our four children and all of their spouses are U of M graduates. Any education is a very light piece of baggage to carry with you. In simple terms, there's our formal education gained through school and university. And there is our informal education caught through living. In this fast-paced world with technology changing by the day, it occurs to me that although this knowledge, speed, is there, people haven't changed. We don't have to look far to discover the great achievements spawned by intellect, creativity, and education. Nuclear power, information technologies. We have just witnessed a social revolution in Egypt because of being able to tweet, Twitter, text, and blog. There's been life-saving vaccines developed, textiles that allow people to go into space wearing apparel that protect them, engineering marvels such as the Confederation Bridge, and from agriculture, the development of new foods, for instance, the development of canola right here at the University of Manitoba. We live in a world awash with opportunity for creativity, technology, rapid advancement, and unparalleled success. But it is all for naught without substance and meaning. In Manitoba, we are very lucky to have an exceptional quality of life. We feel a certain pride which translate into living within caring communities and an amazing opportunity to participate in the leadership of our communities and demonstrate articulated values. 
There was a trend in North America towards materialism, which manifested itself in being well off financially for several decades. Interestingly, in the last few years, the trend is slowly changing. Developing a meaningful philosophy of life has been capturing the imagination of students, and they, you, are becoming more interested in bringing about social change and political change. I believe there is a deep, almost basic, human need to be a contributor to the welfare of others and society. Today, as you conclude your university education, at least for now, I'd like you to ask yourself, what is the meaning of all this? What will your contribution be to this ever-changing, fast-paced society? How important is it to you to have a meaningful place in life? I would urge you to pay attention to the effective values of contribution, cooperation, citizenship, and community. Remember, your life must have meaning and not just the trappings of material success. The author Robert Fulham tells a wonderful story of attending an institute in Greece, an institute dedicated to healing the wounds of war. At the conclusion of the seminar, the director of the institute, who had lived through the agony of that war, asked if there were any questions. Fulham then asked the most important question of all. What is the meaning of life? The elderly man said, I will answer your question. He took from his wallet a very small, round mirror, about the size of a quarter. He told the story of his childhood. His family was very poor and lived in a small town. One day on the road, he had found a broken mirror. He tried to find all the pieces and put them together, but it was impossible, so he kept only the large one. This one, he said. He had scratched it on a stone to make it round, with smooth edges. It became a toy. He was fascinated by the fact it could reflect light into dark places where the sun did not shine, deep holes, dark closets. It became a game to get light into the most inaccessible places he could find. The man said, I kept the mirror, and in the moments growing up, I continued the challenge of the game. As I became a man, he said, I came to understand not just a child's game, but a metaphor for what I might do with my life. I came to understand that I am not the light or the source of the light, but light, truth, understanding, and knowledge is there, and it will only shine in many dark places if I reflect it. He continued saying, I am a fragment of a mirror whose whole I do not know. Nevertheless, with what I have, I can reflect light into dark places of my work, into the black places in the hearts of people, and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see and do likewise. The old man paused and said, this is what I am about. This is the meaning of life. Each of you will have your own meaning for life. As you leave this life as a student, I share with you some of the insights, choices, decisions, ideas that I have found out that worked for me. Life's responsibilities are your own. If you shift that responsibility to someone else, you will never find your place. Others can give you a name, perhaps a position in an organization, but only you can fill in the blanks. Accept challenges and opportunities that present themselves to you. Try to develop an intergenerational friend base there is much to learn from those older and younger than you. Start every day afresh. It's an empty canvas and be aware that life is lived in moments. Every day should be a game day. As you hang your degree on the wall, I encourage you to make a commitment to lifelong learning. Continue to nurture the life of your mind. Reading, reflection, discussing and debating will serve you well. As you leave today, Think about the kind of person you would like to be and go for it. There is nothing more enduring and necessary for a life fulfilled for you, your family, community and country than an education that sets a civic goal at the end of intellectual development. Today is the culmination of a lot of work and sacrifice. Wherever you go from here, cast light into the many corners and crevices that would not have light without you. Travel safely. You matter. Because the future is sending back good wishes and waiting for you with open arms. Thank you and best wishes to each one of you. God bless.